fields of a migration professional. I think that it's skills are complex. I thought about writing a document, but really writing a document about the skills it risks to be an endless uh, list of uh, of skills. Uh, so let's uh, look at the at the graphic of, of the migration problem. This is more or less a summary of, the, of what happens with the migration. Uh, with the analysis, of course, that has to be before any other activity. And then uh, with the flow of activities and uh, with those, those two macros and macro activities that are top of everything else. So let's say that someone that uh, Someone that is certified in, in, in handling migration should be able to manage all this stuff. Of course, I don't think we can expect that we have someone that is, has the same skill in analysis, in training, support, deployment and so on, and at the same time in communication and project management. So we probably have to look at, at people that are able to fulfill couple of two or three of these tasks because they are professionally involved in these tasks but are able to coordinate the project so they are able to choose someone for communication if they are not good at communication but we don't want them to say as I'm not good at communication or as I'm not good, good at doing project management we don't do project management because in this case the point of having a protocol and there are reference and sub. In this case, let's say that the, the, the guy that follows the entire world is someone very skilled in training, it may happen, and maybe is skilled in support, he knows nothing about project management communication. We expect uh, if he's certified that he will find someone that helps him in communication and project management. Not that he says simply, we don't do that because it, I'm not able. Because in this case, we know that the, 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 the migration is going to fail. So we expect people that is able to handle the process, understanding which are his strengths and which are his weaknesses. And according to his strengths and weaknesses, he's able to handle that in a way that reflects all this. This is why I said I want to see people, uh, as we say in Italian, there are a few Italians here, I, io li voglio vedere nelle palle degli occhi. Uh, that means I want to see, look them into the white of their eyes. Because I, I don't want to understand from their expression if they are really lying to you and say I'm able to do that or not. Because if you see them in their face you can understand that. On a phone line everyone can cheat. Uh, I want to really understand if they are serious enough. I mean, I totally understand that I, I, I'm probably good at, good, more at communication and other stuff. Uh, but if I have to handle a migration, I will never go and do the analysis myself without someone that is technically skilled. Because I will do a bad service to the client, to the customer that is it might be a public administration, it might be a company, but at the end I would fail. Because if, if I tell him that no problem in migrating would be a make of macros, I don't even know how a macro is done. And uh, so I have done trainings. Uh, so I can do something like everyone else. I think that everyone that has handled migration in this room uh, as uh, his strong points and his weak points here is totally normal. You can you cannot know everything of this of this uh, process. What we want to be sure for for certified people is that they understand their limits in handling this process, and so they create a group that handles the process in a professional way. This is what it means to be certified. It means that you are you go to, to your uh, to your customer because at the end uh, we want to create we want to make it easier 
for people that sell services to sell these services. And when I say sell services, it can be internally to your company or externally to, as, a, as a consultant. Of course, uh, if, if we go to the uh, Umbria migration, uh, Sonia that has handled most of our co coordinated most of the trainings. Uh, Sonia had customers, although she is a, an employee of the, the, the organization. But she has the committers that were their bosses and the politicians and the customers that are the people that were trained and, and the managers of the people that were trained. So you have customers if you are inside an organization and of course you are customers course sell services through his company to Dutch companies. So he has a committer and a customer as a consultant. But if you are inside a company, you you are always in a, in, a, in, a, in a committer customer relationship and we don't want people to fail in, if they are inside a company we don't want people to fail if they are outside the company we want people that sell at the end that I've, I've hired someone that was certified by TDF and I've seen the difference this is what we the target is to, to convince people that the only way to deploy LibreOffice on a large number of desktops is to use uh, someone that is certified to do that. Because the, the certified guy will make you sure that this is respected. And of course this can be improved, but at least this has been tested by migrations like uh, the one that LIFE has done in, uh, in, uh, in Copenhagen, by the Libre Umbria project, by other projects around, uh, around Europe. Uh, we know that if you respect that, you will probably have a, I would say, from a good to, to very good result. If you miss something here, you probably will have complaints. And this gives you a more or less time frame uh, in terms of uh, timing uh, and I think uh, if we look at that uh, and we see uh, the Regione Umbria that was 1000 deaths of migration you need uh, one year to do that for 1000 people you need one year you can step in if you want in a minute you are not killing them. so that is uh, about the skills for people for migration and uh, let's look at the skill for people for trainings. So trainings uh, is, a, is a similar story. Uh, this is more or less the flow of what you do when, when you want to train in a, in a good way a group of people. You, you start from uh, assessing the needs, uh, you, you evaluate the situation of people that has to be trained so which are the, the average skill of the people that have to be trained you create a learning environment so you, you need slides if you don't have slides you, you need the best I mean the basics then uh, you, 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 you give the training so you transfer that you evaluate because if you don't evaluate you will never know how the training has been uh, received by people uh, and of course you, in the meantime uh, you, you, you select the training for traditional e-learning and, and you monitor and evaluate that uh, so it's uh, there is quite a number of uh, tasks to be performed uh, and uh, again someone that is certified as a trainer may be very good at doing a couple of this stuff and not everything but he has to understand when he needs to get people that help him in creating the entire project, the entire program so what we expect from people that is uh, trained, that is certified uh, is uh, not only that they are good at doing something so they know LibreOffice 
they know the community, they know how to interact with the community, which is important. They know when to address the community to solve a problem. They know when to use the mailing lists. They know when to file a bug. Because uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you, for instance, during a migration, I would say that someone that handles a migration doesn't file a single bug, there is some problem somewhere. Because if you handle a migration of a large enterprise, if you don't stumble into any bug, uh, then it is a miracle. Uh, because it's, I mean, uh, that it, it's, it's, it's normal. Uh, it's normal that maybe you have a format that has never been, uh, uh, you, you have a template that has some tricks inside it and uh, it is not supported by the latest version, there is a refresh on something, maybe your font is not well supported, you have to, you know, the, 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 the matrix of cases is so big that you, you, you really cannot, cannot even figure out how, how, many, how many cases there are. Uh, and in training is more or less the same, because if you build a training course, you will have to use the software. And if you use the software, you may stumble into a bug. And if, and if you are a certified professional in training in anything, I expect you, you stumble into a bug, I expect you that you open Maxilla and you find the bug. Because that is the only way that you can contribute to the project. And we want certified people to contribute to the project. And if you find something, maybe you see the slides that someone else has done and you have a suggestion, you find the suggestion on the main list. Because this is the only way where we can all grow together and improve what we do in each country, in each project, in each... Uh, because otherwise, we we perform like a separated entity and this let, let Microsoft and this certified gold uh, plant and I don't know what uh, certified people uh, that is a commercial certification I give you 5,000 5, bucks and you have to certify me ok, of course we don't ask 5,000 bucks we will probably ask a to cover the expenses is similar to the Linux Foundation certification that is $300 we have talked about 250 euros so it's, a, it's something that is affordable for someone to and uh, it just pays out the time of the people that have certified you it doesn't pay all, all the environment but what we expect in change of the fact that you are certified for an affordable amount of money is that you help this project to grow and your help is to contribute to certification as you can contribute to any other part of the project say I've just trained I don't know people in a, in a bank and I've seen that this kind of approach is better than the one that I've used so far share the approach, we are not going to steal your slides, we share the approach we don't want your slides we want to understand which was the trick that has made your training more successful than in the past uh, some people writing to me said but if I give you my slides you are going to copy that this is the typical approach of someone that has never had to do with open source I'm not going to copy your slides. I may steal some of your ideas, but, but you are free to steal my ideas. All my stuff is public, is online. When I show people, I say, do you want to see my slides? They are here. And, and the, the, the question of some people is, but why you publish everything? Because that is the only way that someone else can see what I do and improve what I've done. Otherwise, if I keep it for myself, uh, at the end is, you know, it's self-contained. We want to help the certification project has to be also one way
to educate the ecosystem around us, to improve their participation and their interaction with the project. Because this is the, the point where we go, where, where we are tangent to the other ecosystem. I received an email from a, a, an Italian um, Microsoft Go trainer, and the guy wrote me from a clearly fake address, was Mario Rossi. So Mario Rossi at Gmail, uh, I mean, uh, Mario Rossi, in Italy there are probably one million of Mario Rossi around Italy. So it's so generic that the chances that it's really a Mario Rossi that writes you are very low. Uh, it's the typical John Doe in, uh, in the States. So I, I replied and said, is that your real name? And he said, no, but I don't want that Microsoft knows that I am interacting with you. And I said, okay. So that ends the discussion. We will not certify anyone that shows up with a fake name. Of course not. We cannot certify your alias, but even the first approach is wrong. Uh, my answer is, uh, you know, my alias online is Italo Vignoli, which might be a little bit dull, but I'm the only one worldwide with this name. So it's rather clear. If you are interact with someone that is as I'm Italo Vignoli on Twitter, LinkedIn, everywhere. So it's me. It's transparent. Not anyone else can use this name. I mean, they not the name, but anyway. Uh, so my approach is totally transparent. It's me. Uh, I'm not hiding behind any alias. I'm not criticizing people using alias. I know that in the developers area you have a nickname, but even the nickname becomes a, a kind of trademark for developers. So after short time that the, the nickname become the way that they are recognized with that. I want people to be transparent. I, I want to know people that talk with me and I want to understand who they are. If you are scared by the fact that Microsoft might know that you are dealing with LibreOffice and you are a Microsoft trainer, you want, don't want to appear because you, you, you fear that Microsoft can do something to you, sorry, this is the wrong attitude to become a LibreOffice certified trainer. You might be the best trainer worldwide. I don't mind. This is not the right attitude. Because uh, uh, what is going to propose this guy when he goes to a, to, to a customer? I want him to be an ambassador of the office, not an ambassador of the best paying customer. So that's. It's, uh, the, the certification is, a, is an instrument for us to get on the market. We will, uh, I think that people think, you know, as it's, they're, they're all uh, night, the open source guys are all nice guys, so they will certify everyone. They will be amazed how reduced will be the number of certified people. By the way, I've been teaching at the University of Milan uh, for two years after my graduation. Uh, I'm not, of course, I, if you're worried that I was teaching technical subject, no. Uh, I, I, I have a graduation in geography, human geography, uh, and so I've been a professor of human geography for two years at the University of Milan. And I was considered a bastard when dealing with examination uh, because I wanted people to study. And that was in the years where the, you know, top votes were popular. Uh, I, I entered the university in '68, so you can understand which was the time. It was, uh, you know, max the highest note for everyone because, uh, you know, democracy means that everyone uh, has to get a high note. And uh, and, and I, I wanted to see people sweat blood to get a good note. And uh, I was not popular, but I don't mind. I mean, I'm sure that the, the students that I, that I gave good notes were deserving good notes, and the one that I sent away 
uh, but the, the you know the mindset is the same. So I, I will not be a nice guy when it comes to uh, review people, just because I think that it is a serious process and we have to handle that as a very serious process. It's not a fault not to be certified. You have a chance to apply again. We don't say you 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 didn't go over the first time it's done. You have a chance to apply again after three months. Three months is a fair time to study again and to be prepared. I'm happy to certify someone that has failed the first one, but I'm not happy to certify someone that I'm not totally sure that is a really good certified professional when he goes on the market. And he would, the next time he will be alone. There's no one from the Document Foundation within. And this is where you will be performing the right way. Uh, I finished, uh, in fact, this was a long presentation in three chunks. Uh, and uh, if you have questions, I otherwise, I'm here until uh, Friday night if you want to ask me. Uh, my email is uh, italo at libreoffice.org. Uh, I have others, it's italo at documentfoundation.org, it's italo at italo at So I have quite a number of email, emails. Uh, you're free to write me, uh, I'm happy to answer any question. Uh, I, I think that we have to make all together this project a success as uh, TDF has been a success so far. I don't want claps, I want questions. I know I'm good at presenting. I've been doing that for 30 years as a profession, so that's it's not my... I am rather self-confident. No question. I would like to ask, uh, maybe I uh, miss something, but uh, these uh, certified trainers and uh, certified migration, yeah. these are two different things? Yes, yeah. Okay. And just the two, trainer and migration? No, you, you have developers, okay, you have and uh, in the future we will have support. But the, the, let's say the demand from the market has been more on developers, migrators and trainers. It looks like support, you know, support is probably, is different in the sense that you have level 1, level 2, level 3 support. Many companies have already level 1 support in-house, uh, so they probably don't see the need of doing, uh, to, have, to have someone certified because they have their own guys inside the company that are already doing a kind of call center. Yeah, uh, actually it's very similar to, to training because you have to know the product, you have to be able to, un you have to be a little bit more technically skilled. I mean, after having heard what the community body support center tells you to end users, I would never certify these guys because the answer is, oh, okay, Microsoft Office doesn't work, it's not my problem. So that, this was the, the answer that they gave us, uh, called Microsoft. So the trainers uh, cannot need uh, some experience with migration? Uh, right? it, it's not necessary, it it's not necessary. necessary. Of course they, you know, uh, Although training is a critical part of migration, you might have uh, someone that is only working on training because it works in, a, in an IT school that provides training for people that want to learn LibreOffice. Uh, they might be in an organization, they might be individuals, I don't know. So, of course, it may well happen that someone certified in, in uh, migrations hires someone certified in training to do the training for the migration. This is a scenario that I see, but also I see a scenario where someone just provides training which are disconnected from a migration.